In this video, we're going to take a tour of the Collins Line ships. You've seen our documentary profiling all five of the ship's histories. This video, instead, is focusing on how these ships are laid out and what they looked like inside. Very little does exist on these ships, and the first four ships were all quite similar, so let's do the broad strokes detailing these four together before moving on to the fifth and final Collins liner, the Adriatic. The first four made their debut with the SS Atlantic. These four ships were all about 276 feet long, with a beam of 45 feet. They were so big that a special dock had to be built in Liverpool to accommodate them. They had two paddle wheels, powered by an engine with two side levers. We do know that the forward sections of the lower deck were cargo holds, as on most ships, and confirmed by statements from Arctic surviving engineers who attempted to stop the leaks as she was going down and gave descriptions of entering these holds as they flooded. There are no known plans of any of these ships, so the interior layout is not well known, but we do know a couple of things. Two of the ships, the Atlantic and the Pacific, had two main deck houses, divided by a space of open deck. The other two ships, the Baltic and the Arctic, had one large deck house without that division. Most of the primary deck house is made up of first class staterooms and the officers' quarters and in the section closest to the ship's bridge, which spanned the paddle boxes, were the quarters of the captain and his chart room. Each ship had two main saloons, one for dining and one for lounging. The lounging saloon was commonly referred to as the drawing saloon, as described in early descriptions regarding the interiors of the Collins steamships. Aboard the original four Collins steamers, the drawing saloon measured 75 feet in length and 20 feet broad undoubtedly an impressive size for the time. The main dining saloon, however, was slightly shorter in length. Within that particular compartment, the grand dining saloon would have measured 65 feet in length. However, she was 40 feet broad. Each of the two saloons would have been situated on the main deck, which was just below the weather deck. The forwardmost would likely have been the dining saloon, which stretched the full width of the ship and was capable of seating all saloon class passengers at once. The tabletops were of Italian marble, and overhead were stained glass ventilators. However, the two public compartments, the dining saloon and the drawing saloon, were not immediately connected with each other. Separating the two saloons would have been a large pantry. When it came to the magnificent decor of the two saloons, no detail nor ounce of comfort was spared. The saloons were fitted up in a very superior manner. A fine complement of rose, satin, and olive were masterfully carved and applied in the compartments. The carpets were extraordinarily rich, and the coverings of the sofas, chairs, as well as the craftsmanship of the tables within her drawing saloon were of truly superior quality. The panels within the two saloons contain gorgeously finished patriotic emblems of each of the states within the United States. You will notice that in depictions of the Collins ships, there appear to be large tube-shaped objects that ran up through the vessel. These large circular glass objects served as ventilators, even though they would appear to have been funnel uptakes, reaching from the boat deck and down to the lower saloon, two decks below. These tubes were richly ornamented, with handsome mirrors being placed upon them to perhaps disguise the true purpose of these tubes. As an article describes in regards to Atlantic Saloon, there is not much gilding, and the colors are not gaudy, but the general effect is chasteness, elegance, comfort, and solidity. The drawing saloon was decorated in brown, with mirrors, stained glass, and paintings. Shooting off from the lounge towards the outside of the ship were the passenger corridors, and on the panels between each passenger corridor were the state seals of each of the United States. Down these short corridors, likely each only about 12 feet long, we'd find comfortable cabins, with enough cabins to hold about 150 saloon class berths. Each cabin aboard the vessel contained a bell rope, or a steward's call bell, communicating with one of the Jackson's patent American enunciators. Intriguingly, we know precisely as to how the steward call bells aboard this vessel functioned. For the steward or stewardess within their compartment, they would find that the bell rope consists of a plate, which was somewhat similar to a clock face, containing various numbers which corresponds to the numbers assigned to the staterooms. 
Each number is concealed by a semicircular plate, which, as soon as the bell rope was pulled within one of the staterooms, would turn around. As a result, this would disclose the number corresponding to the exact room where the rope was pulled. A steward or stewardess thus will be summoned after receiving this notification. Of course, one must keep in mind that the Atlantic and her sisters were designed before 1849, and therefore no electricity could have been implemented. A luxury such as this one, aboard a transatlantic steamship at the time, was a true novelty. The ladies on board each vessel would have had their own boudoir located at the stern of the ship, believed to be the safest part of the vessel in the event of a collision, which was usually head-on. The boudoir was located on the hurricane deck, within the immediate aftermost compartment of the long deckhouse up top. The shape of the room curved with the stern, and was adorned with intricate stained glass windows overlooking the ship's wake behind them. The stained glass windows featured images of New York City, Boston, and Philadelphia, as well as various other famous cities in the United States. Somewhere among all of this, likely around the ship's primary lounging saloon, was the barber shop, complete with a state-of-the-art barber chair and all the tools one would need for a shave and a haircut. Jumping back out on deck, we see a small deckhouse forward. This was a stairway down and was the primary access for second-class passengers to get below to their berths. There would have likely been a singular saloon for all second-class purposes, socializing and dining, with corridors branching off to the staterooms. The Adriatic was a scaled-up version of these first four ships designed by the same man and built in the same yard as two of the first four. She had an additional deckhouse stacked on top of another deckhouse designed for crew quarters. She also had an enclosed wheelhouse, a feature installed later in some of the first four, as we can see in this photograph on deck of the Baltic taken closer to the American Civil War. Although no imagery seems to exist, a smoke room was installed for the male saloon passengers as a counterpart to the ladies' boudoir at the stern. The overall structure of the ship was not divided into watertight compartments. Other ships of the time were starting to integrate that technology into their design, but the Collins liners did not. This unfortunately proved to be a fatal flaw in the Arctic disaster, and quite possibly the disappearance of the Pacific. There isn't too much else to say about the layouts of these ships, as little else is known. It's a shame. These vessels seem to be real works of art and impressed the public on both sides of the Atlantic. But hopefully this little vignette was enough for you to visualize, at least somewhat, what a walking tour of these legendary vessels would have been like. A special thank you as well to my 54 current Patreon supporters, as well as those who gave a one-time donation. But a special thanks to Trent Greger, Zach Richards, Tom Shivada, Donald Anderson, Cody Henricks, Rob M, Amos Mayhew, Corey Andrews, Dakota Charbonneau, Nicholas Masella, Zolt Bognar, and Colton Wilson. If you enjoyed these videos and want to help me make more in the future, please consider supporting me on Patreon at patreon.com slash part-time explorer. Thank you very much for watching.